Hey everybody, it is Eric and it is Jay, and we are back from doing time in Joliet at Autobahn Country Club, which, as it says in the name, is a country club. Which means that rich guys have their cars there and drive on the track that we aren't using, and in this case, a guy in a Porsche accidentally drove onto our hot pit and we had to shoo him out of there, not once, but twice. Don't know what the deal was, but country club life. Hello, sweet. We had a new judge, Andrew Bailey. He joined Corey Dickman in the penalty box. And now Andrew has driven for Team Landshark, so Team Landshark's theme was Judge Andy. Gotta love the self-referential theming. Worst friend. <laughs> Unfortunately for the new judges, like most Midwest races, this one was pretty well behaved and the penalty box was largely empty. However, we did manage to get in Lemon's inaugural round of rubber chicken tag, which is basically Marco Polo, but instead of having to shout Polo, the group who are trying not to be tagged have rubber chickens that are squeaking wrapped to their feet. Now, we had a bunch of new teams at this race, and some of them, $500 my ass. However, you do not have to worry about that with this team. Lakeshore Drive brought a 2015 Chevy Malibu. These guys are all Chevy techs. Somebody brought this car in and the repair bill, the estimate was like more than $185. And the person just said like, it's yours. So free car. This thing looked like it was ready to get returned to Avis at eight o'clock. And what happened with this essentially new General Motors sedan? It dominated and the transmission did not pack up in seven laps. Not quite as new, in fact, twice as old, was the Bimmer Bombers 2007 BMW 3 Series, which, you know, twice as old, but still a BMW, therefore much better at this. How do you get it into lemons? Well, you take a few penalty laps to start, but these guys in St. Louis found a completely roached Copart 3 Series that had also had an interior fire that had melted all of the wiring. They spent literally months going through the wiring and hand splicing every single connection on it. They did not dominate the race anyway. And of the rookie team, some of them even brought great themes like Thunderbolt Grease Slapper Racing and their Chevy Corvette. Most of you are probably not old enough to remember the Tom Slick cartoon series. It was sort of wacky racers by the Rocky and Bullwinkle people. It's actually kind of but excellent. However, these guys remembered it, they did a wonderful theme, and because it's a Corvette, they also didn't dominate. Not quite rookies, but adding a second car for this one were the Woody Woodpecker and Buzz Buzzard guys. Now, everybody knows Woody Woodpecker, nobody knows his nemesis, Buzz Buzzard. That's a great two-car theme, and they picked two identical cars that obviously share parts, a base model Chevy Cavalier and an Acura RSX Type S. But terrible. So this track is right next door to this giant intermodal transit logistics terminal. And this race, we don't know why, two of the yard workers in the intermodal terminal were talking about homebrew literally for hours and stepping on the radio channels. It feels like it's a balloon, like an inflated balloon. Hello, sweet. I particularly like Snap, Crackle, and Pop's Spirit of Lemons theme. Now, we were in the Midwest, and we were at a country club, so what could have been better than not one, not two, not three, but four Cadillacs in this race? You guys should have listened to my dad. He told me to be a pharmacist. We will start with Team Hillbilly Deluxe and their Cadillac CTS. And when we say CTS, most people's minds go to the CTS-V, which this one was not at all. This was a first year CTS with the Opal V6, AKA the Katera motor. Mind you, CTS is Katera Touring Sedan. Uh, I've never really heard of that. With an automatic, a dash full of warning lights, and they plucked it out of a farm field full of God knows what in Western Illinois. Kind of a perfect lemons car and a Katera provenance. Can't really top that. So that's gotta be 20, at least 27 years ago. Then there was Cheap Thrills and their double Cadillac XLRs. That was one XLR race car. And you know, if you're driving an XLR race car, what's your street car? Another XLR. At least it used to be because after this race, they sold their street car to another guy who was probably gonna turn into an 11th car. This could be a spec series, people. And they 
he actually uh, let me hear it on the stethoscope. Yet another Cadillac saved the Tatas in their Cadillac Seville, which is a Camaro underneath, but never mind that. This was the car's 51st Lemons race. It is one of the most raced Lemons cars ever, which we covered in a recent Lemons World episode. Go see that. We will talk about the fourth Cadillac in a little bit. And the themes just went on and on. I gotta say, you guys have been picking it up in the last year. Really well done, including these guys, a futile and stupid gesture, they're back with their Miata and their 24-7 whole weekend long dinosaur suits. Also, SMS Racing with the Lincoln LS came back with their BMW at home meme theme looking like the cheap version of Need for Speed Most Wanted. Now, they came as every single BMW owner stereotype. See, BMW is not just a brand, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> We had a whole bunch of space themes. That's always a favorite of Eric's and Nick's. Occupy Saturn, uh, they brought their Saturn. Usually that's a Top Gun. They've upgraded it to Space Force. MR Blue did a 2001 Space Odyssey. That's pretty good. And going a little more obscure was wildly ambitious performance in their Volkswagen Jetta. They did a Mutants of 2051 AD theme, which of course was the movie within a movie from Doug and Bob McKenzie that they were making in the movie Strange Brew. The recreation of it was super awkward and very confusing, which was actually a faithful reproduction and therefore a perfectly executed theme. Fittingly, they also recreated the spaceship from Mutants of 2051. This was a deep pull and I appreciated it. Another super weird cinematic deep draw, Over the Top. Dunning-Kruger and their Subaru did an Over the Top theme. And what was that? Well, it was a movie with Sylvester Stallone and I think it was the 70s. It involved trucking and competitive arm wrestling and divorce and it was just hella weird. And what does Lemons do if not hella weird? Well done. What were you thinking when you made Over the Top? What? <laughs> over the Top? I mean, you had to arm wrestle a guy for the custody of your son, for God's sake. Uh, we really can't get away from the pop culture here. The Flying Pirates Starsky and Hutch painted Crown Victoria came back, and the team captain put his 80-year-old mother-in-law, who has done skydiving and some racing in her previous life, into their Crown Vic. That's hella sweet. I couldn't get over 40, right. and then I went off, and I'd start again, and I'd go... <laughs> Hella Sweet 7 tenths Racing, they did a Harry Potter Mercedes F1 mashup. Uh, the wands were all crap that has broken off the car. We loved it. The Van and Ball Caravan was back and doing normal van things in Zach's first race after his big cross-country trip. Hella Sweet Wisconsin Crap Racing brought back their $100 Suzuki Kazashi for the second time in a row. It just ran like a train. They're trying to kill it. Cannot kill it. Why won't you die? Hella sweet, and a car that somehow escaped being in these videos to date is Wally's aged cheddar heads in their Triumph TR7. Now they did the smart thing with the TR7 and threw the original motor out and then put in, for some reason, a 1981 Buick Riviera V6. Runs like a glove. But terrible, soapy water racers, that is Chris Fix. He did not have a good weekend, though we will not ruin the suspense for you beyond that. I should have listened to my, my, uh, my dream and oh, dropping my lighter. All right, let's get on to the trophies. The Heroic Fix trophy went to Anonymous 2. Now they have been running the same half-ass theme for eight years. Real-time racing, yawn. So we gave them all kinds of grief about this and they came back for this race. They showed up with a pretty half-assed repo man. They were not working this thing very hard. So we gave them more about it and said, look, dudes, like if you don't step it up, dot, dot, dot. One of the team members said, you know, I had this other idea, but we couldn't quite, didn't know if it was cool. Eric said, do that, whatever it is, just do that right now. Problem solved. In today's lemons, even a theme fix is heroic. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? We chose it. Now the Road Mangler Cup went to Oops Logistics and their Mercedes C280. They've had a pretty mediocre theme in the past, but they brought a delivery man kind of, not quite UPS, but uh, with some interesting packages to deliver. I know that Yokohama doesn't provide wheel studs, but maybe the free set of tires they've won can save them enough money to get better ones for the next race. The Here for the Beer Cup, this isn't even one of our trophies. Here for the Beer, they bring their own trophy and give it to whoever they want, which we think is pretty excellent. This time they chose Sofa King. Now, Sofa King has run with a incredibly mediocre half-ass theme for a really long time. 
Here for the Beer gave them all kinds of hard time, and they too decided to step up their theme. Yay! This time they did a full Sofa King Furniture Dealer Eastern European theme, complete with mobile gasoline-powered sofa. Not that hard. The event-specific trophy was the Why Can't I Find a Civic Windshield Trophy, which is pretty self-explanatory. It went to Landshark. Many, many, many years of racing under their belts with a Civic, and they've developed this nasty habit of forgetting about their hood pins when they come into the paddock. They claim this is their fourth broken windshield, so if you're in the Midwest and wondering why your circa 2000 Honda Civic cannot replace its windshield, it's probably these guys' fault. The judge's choice trophy went to the Apollo 13 B Team. Last year, these guys had a whole booster on their roof kind of theme, and that's great. They towed to Atlanta for the season ender, and guess what? Just the wind of an open trailer, the entire thing disintegrated and blew up. They said, well, we're not gonna make that mistake. This year, they did the same theme, but they reinforced it. Their rocket weighed about 800 pounds, solid as a rock. It did not help their performance, but they got a trophy. Turns out, if you put big shit on your roof, we'll give you a trophy. That's all it takes, just do that. Organizer's Choice went to Bentley Racing. This is a group of recent high school graduates who'd been on a summer internship program last year with Ferrari, with Ferrari in Modena. And it was team members who were kind of spread out globally in LA and Texas, London, and Michigan. They decided to do Lemons as a pre-college send-off. So clearly they got the most Ferrari kind of car that they could, right? I mean, Fiat, Alfa Romeo, Launch a Scorpion, something like that. Exactly. They went and found a 1998 Cadillac DeVille. Was it a high performance machine? It was not. But they had a great time being together before they all scattered off to college. Sure, there were some mishaps with a blown head gasket all weekend and some visibility problems, so to speak. But in the end, they had a great time as friends and they basically raced a Ferrari ish. The Halloween Meets Gasoline Trophy went to Team Patapalemons and their Buick LeSabre. You may remember these guys. They used to all go out for Pat's birthday. They'd go on some big trip and, and do a thing. Now they just go to a lemons race, which means they come to party. This year, they chopped the back off of the LeSabre to make a Baywatch patrol truck. They ran around in their bathing suits. They rescued staff member Christy from a shark attack or drowning or a drowning shark. I mean, we don't really know, and I don't think it matters. They did it all weekend, and really, that's all we ask for uh, Halloween meets gasoline. The I Got Screwed trophy, let me give you a little backstory on this. This race had two American body cars with swapped in flathead Chrysler power, because of course it did. And we just decided whichever of those two cars finished, I mean, if they completed more than like four laps, they were gonna be the IOE. So these guys were really going at it, and for a long time, the Ford Mustang, 1995 Ford Mustang, using the X Grumpy Cat flathead Chrysler motor originally swapped into a race car mid-race from an airport tug. Yeah, I think I've said it all there. They were crushing it. Their rival was the Bad Decisions turbocharged flathead Chrysler Camaro, which couldn't touch this Mustang. And they started getting super cocky, these Mustang guys. One of them even said like, oh, you know, three hours from the race, we're just gonna pull over to gloat because we got this thing sewn up. Well, guess how that turned out? I'm at the point now where you just freaking deal with it. What happened instead is that the first couple drivers Sunday morning drove it too hard. Turns out flathead engines not really meant to handle lateral G's, especially from an airport tug, as I understand. There's not a lot of corner speed there. So it started of oil, spun some rod bearings about an hour into Sunday, and they had to sit and wait while the Bad Decisions Camaro turned laps to see if it would maybe slowly pass them. Which it did, so they got screwed by themselves. Which means... The index of affluency went to Bad Decisions Racing and their turbocharged Chrysler Flathead Chevy Camaro. They made the pass for the lead with about 45 minutes remaining, and it was as beautiful as you thought it was while the Mustang was sitting there doing nothing. It's not a race. Take your time. Now, this was hardly a given, we should say. They drove all weekend to the temperature gauge that was reading almost nuclear and not quite into full meltdown, but they did it just well enough to beat their <laughs> talking neighbors and win the IOE. There's probably a lesson in there about going slower or something. I don't know. Maybe a folk story or something. Anyway, Congratulations, Bad Decisions Racing. 
That'll take us to Lemons in a Nutshell. second you don't subscribe or watch one of these videos, another Vega is sent to the crusher. Won't you help us save Classic?